don't know. I think I think you're a baby. I think you're, you're tiny, aren't you? Hey, tiny and fluffy. Well, I'm uh, down the allotment. It's, uh, I think it's the, se it's the second week of uh, July, um, August. Uh, riddled with, um, with weeds, but I'm not giving up because I've got cropping today. And look at the size of that pumpkin. There's two pumpkins there, and it's taking over the plot. I shall go and show you um, one of it. Not pumpkin. It's this winter squash, Marina de Chioggia. Uh, and over here we have uh, some sarpanera potatoes. A little bit worse for wear, but if you, um, I'm not going to show you other plots here, uh, plots here with all the blight um, going around. I've got a little bit of blight. There's one one potato um, getting killed by blight, but you can see little spots of spots of it going on. So it's time to. Uh, it's probably not time to dig it up, but I'm fed up with looking at it. So um, what I'm going to do is do a sort of test dig. I've uh, I brought I'm recording on my phone because I bought the camera down without a SIM card in it, without um SD card in it, which uh, Mr. Numpty. So I can't record I can't record and dig at the same time. But I'll um I'll pick things up um, as I go along. So I'm going to start digging now. Let's see what we got. There. Oh, look at this, it's just, um, just one plant, and there's a load, there's a load in there, really nice size, that'll make, that'll make good eating, oh, I'm impressed with that, and again, as I keep banging on on this, um, on this site, this bed here is the permaculture bed, it's had 20, more than 20 months worth of um, clover, so it's had one autumn, one one uh, growing year and another autumn and winter of of have clover and field beans and other nitrogen fixing um, legumes and then I've grown things on here since uh, so that provided the, uh, the nutrients for the plant so this is one one plant and we've got loads of loads of potatoes and well chuffed uh, and this is uh, I'll put my hand next to it. No, I'm a big fella, by the way. Uh, but you know, so I've got big hands. But there you go. There's uh, what a crop from uh, from one plant. Sarpomira, that is. Light resistant variety. Clover for fertility. And uh, no manure fertilizer or anything else. Uh, I don't know why um, people grow any other potato. Well. There are new potatoes that are much better tasting the South Mirror, but look at look at the crop on that. Have I woken you up? You've got a bad stomach, you're eating grass. Come on then. You're that nervy. You're that nervy.
Oh, he's off. I know I said I was going to cut this a couple of, um, couple of weeks ago. Look at the size of that. And I'm, I'm painfully aware that uh, they taste a lot more watery when you cut them young. I don't know if I'm going to take that out. So um, I'm going to leave that there. That's Marina de, uh, de Chioccia. I think this is Lord Lambourne, um, an apple. They seem to have, uh, I ate one about a month ago and it was like tasteless. But I'm going to give this one a go, a taste test online, or live on YouTube. I mean, it's a pretty looking app. I think it's Lord La uh, Lambourne. I bought two little apple trees. One was Lord Lambourne, and one wasn't. Uh, I'll have to look it up on the internet later on. All right, taste test. Let's give it a whirl. No, a bit flowery. We're either not done, or it's a, a bad old variety. Not the world's biggest, but it's food. Let's put some uh, white clover down. I've hoed this off and uh, given it a quick rake, and then uh, put some white clover down. This will um, produce nitrogen for for next year, or I'll probably probably over um, probably do it for 24 months. We'll see how I feel next uh, next year. But um, these this uh, white clover will uh, take nitrogen from the air and put it in its uh, in its roots, which will put it into my vegetables, which will put it into my stomach. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the plan. I've um, I've taken advice of somebody off the internet and uh, crushed my coriander seed. Home, this is homegrown coriander seed that I've, I've taken this year. Uh, I've crushed it in a mortar and pestle, and this is supposed to make it um, germinate quicker. So um, God knows whether it's going to work. I don't know whether to believe him or not. But I'm told um, we're all told you know, things like sweet peas and stuff. You need to crack the um, crack the coatings. So. Um, that's what we're gonna what we're gonna try out. So I'll bring a couple of them. See how quickly I have found that um, that coriander takes ages um, to to germinate. So these over here, um, these coriander's, they've just come up today. Well, at least in the last 24 hours, and they were sown on the 8th of this month, which is this month, which is quite quite quick. Um, normally, I, I normally um, it takes 20 days or so to germinate, so it must be something to do with the August. But anyway, um, it was been it's been very very wet. I wonder whether or not that's um, that's a, that's a factor.
Always make sure you mark your um, um, mark your um, pots with the date because you uh, you will forget definitely. Anyway, we'll compare um, how long it this takes the, with the crushed um, coriander seed uh, with the non-crushed coriander seed. Pan uh, type of um, summer squash. Uh, it's been here since oh, blimey. It's been here since since June, and it's had no fruit on it. And just as I come over here to film me pulling it up, find a fruit. So it might. So it must have heard me discussing it earlier on, and um, decided to put one out. It's it's uh, this was its last chance. And it's just had a reprieve. So it's late, it's late August, so really I should have had, you know, at least a month and a half's worth of grub out of this, but um, I'm going to give it one last chance. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. It's been all male flowers this month. So it's not a big part, but um, it just hasn't, um, just hasn't produced for me. But anyway, I'll give it one last chance. I just got the fruit. Uh, in, in England we have a radio programme on uh, Radio 4, um, which is the Posh Channel, and uh, there's a radio programme called Gardener's Question Time, and Bob, Bob uh, Flowerdew, uh, an organic gardener, um, tells of um, his technique of uh, if he's got a tree or, um, or a bush or whatever that's not fruiting properly, he leaves an axe next to it. Uh, just to um, give the uh, tree uh, notice that its, it's uh, days are numbered uh, to, to buck its ideas out. So I think um, I can confirm that technique um, uh, works. Uh, I was just discussing it ten minutes ago with my partner about digging this one up. And I've actually got some plants I want to go in here, a couple of broccoli and things like that. So, so I'm a bit gutted, but um, well, it's just repeated itself. some pretty sweet peas that Tom grew and that I steal with great joy. I'm hoping that lots more will come if I keep picking it. Isn't that how it works? Yeah, that's how it works. And they smell really 